11,000 years ago, the world's top dog was a very unusual cat. This amazing creature armed with serrated knives vanished from the earth then reappeared not once, but 10 different times. Now scientists are asking, could the next saber-tooth killer be lurking in the wings? In Africa, a cat with a rage to kill is an awesome sight. Today's cats are nature's most efficient predator, but in the distant past, another cat was nature's most horrifying nightmare. from Hollywood's dream factories in the heart of downtown Los Angeles is what looks like a scene from a science fiction movie. Here, tar and methane ooze up from deep within the earth, forming pools of bubbling asphalt. Known locally as the La Brea Tar Pits, they are the relic of a prehistoric world. Preserved in this sticky mire are the remains of thousands of giant beasts, ground sloths, mammoths, bison, and wolves who prowled this urban jungle during the last ice age. But the most famous was a cat with a saber tooth. After nearly a century of digging, more than a million bones have been unearthed that tell a grisly tale. Forty thousand years ago, La Brea looked deceptively like an oasis. Water covered the asphalt, inviting thirsty animals to drink. But as they neared the shore, they were trapped like flies on flypaper. In what must have been a din of noise and confusion, the doomed struggled to be set free. Exhausted after what may have been hours, even days, they slowly began to sink into their tarry graves. Tempted by the prospect of an easy meal, the saber-toothed cats were quick to pounce on their dying prey. But they too became trapped and perished. Over thousands of years, carcass piled upon carcass to create one of the world's most spectacular bone beds. Today, Chris Shaw is in charge of excavating these asphalt death traps. The largest measures up to 28 feet deep and 20 feet across. Here, in Pit 91, Chris is uncovering the bones of a saber-toothed cat called Smilodon. Currently, we're excavating a 10 by 10 foot square area in which we have found hundreds, if not thousands, of bones. We have at least three dozen bones exposed of the saber-toothed cat Smilodon fatalis. In fact, the bone that we see protruding here is the upper part of the thigh bone. Once we extract this bone from here and clean it up, it will look very much like this. You can see that these 
these fossils are very, very well preserved. Asphalt acts like a barrier, protecting the bones from decay. Even the tiniest fragments have been preserved, making saber-toothed cats one of the best known creatures from the prehistoric world. Saber-toothed cats are the second most common large vertebrate from Rancho La Brea, and we have in our collections alone over 166,000 items of saber-toothed cats. This creature, a distant relative of modern cats, roamed what are now the streets of Los Angeles and shared the earth with humans. The size of an African lion, it weighed about 300 pounds. Popularly referred to as a saber-toothed tiger, its name is misleading. Tigers live in jungles and have stripes. Smilodon hunted in the brush on the edge of a forest. Like the jaguars in South America, their coats were probably spotted to blend in with the dappled light filtering through the trees. There, in perfect cover, they waited. But Smilodon's best feature were the six-inch fangs that protruded from its gaping mouth. Crafted like knives with serrated blades, the name appropriately means blade tooth. Combined with powerful neck muscles and a jaw that could open 120 degrees, Smilodon could bring down an animal the size of an elephant with one decisive blow. Incredibly, we now know what Smilodon would have sounded like. Studies of the bones that hold its tongue in place indicate that they roared like lions. Crouched under cover, a hungry Smilodon waited in ambush for a stray giant sloth to wander near. At the perfect moment, it would lunge at its prey. While some found easy pickings at the tar pits, those who died fell prey to an even more insidious predator. Blowflies, lured to the scene by the putrid flesh, swarmed on the carnage to lay their eggs. Their larvae could devour a saber tooth in hours, picking clean the bones. Smilodon disappeared beneath the asphalt of the La Brea tar pits 11,000 years ago. But if one scientist is right, we may not have seen the last of the saber-toothed cats. In the rugged foothills of northeast Wyoming, Dr. Larry Martin of the University of Kansas is on a mission. He's here to hunt down one of the oldest saber tooths known, an unusual cat called Eusmilus that lived 38 million years ago. Well, it looks like you've got a cat skeleton, all right. Yep. I can see a skull over there, and there's an arm bone, and there's part of the backbone there. With the help of his colleagues, Dr. Kent Sundell and Dr. Virginia Naples, Larry Martin is looking for evidence to prove a radical new theory that has scientists up in arms. Saber-toothed cats seem to go extinct, only to reappear with minor variations. This remarkable reincarnation has occurred no less than 10 times over the past 40 million years five times in North America alone. What unseen mechanism of evolution could explain such an incredible reversal? Larry thinks he has the answer. 65 million years ago, after the fall of the dinosaurs, the world was left with a void. Gone were the largest land animals that ever lived. A few experimental predators came and went, but not until the arrival of the saber-tooths had nature perfected a new and even more efficient killer. One of the first was small, but it was breathtaking. 
Eusmilus is one of the most amazing creatures ever uncovered. Only the size of a domestic cat, it could bring down an animal five times larger. Well, here's an animal the size of a house cat that could probably kill a deer. You know, here, here a little animal like this, it has a tooth that's longer than the canine of a lion. Eusmilus was literally armed to the teeth. But in a few million years, the cats and their canines would get bigger and bigger. What would happen, you start out with a small cat, and it'd get big saber-like teeth, and that permitted it to kill larger prey. When it could kill larger prey, it got bigger with even larger teeth, so it could kill even larger prey. And so they just continuously got large until they got big like this. Larry links the appearance of each new line of saber tooths directly to the size and abundance of its prey. The larger the prey, the larger the cat. As large prey disappeared, the cats went with them. But as new kinds of animals evolved, new saber tooths evolved to prey on them. Saber tooth cats are embedded in a pattern of extinction and re-evolution. At the time that they became extinct, about 55% of all the different kinds of large animals would become extinct. And then the whole system, the community, would re-evolve itself and the saber-toothed cats would come back again. Nature is a marvel of ingenuity, but it rarely reinvents the wheel. For 40 million years, some variation on the cats came back to haunt the prehistoric world. If it is true that form follows function, then the cheetah is a natural-born killer. Superbly adapted to chase their prey, they've been clocked at an astonishing 60 miles an hour. But modern cats are strikingly different from their ancient predecessors. Seven million years ago, the largest saber tooth was not like a cat at all. Barbara Felis was built more like a bear, could rear up to six feet, and weighed in at a staggering quarter of a ton. Although it was slow on its feet, its nine-inch long canines made it a killer to be reckoned with. Well, it's useful to kill as large a prey species as you can, and because of their unusually big teeth, saber-toothed cats could kill animals with body sizes much bigger than you would otherwise expect. And that they did this because they have such a wonderful killing machine. They have this knife-like saber here. Now, the idea that this is a saber-toothed cat, you know, that's really incorrect. It's not like a saber at all because the cutting edge is on the inside of the curvature of the blade. What it really is is an Arabian curved knife, and I have one of these right here, and we can just compare it. The way these knives are used, they really have a stroke very much like a saber-toothed cat might have had, something like that. These deadly knives were serrated for maximum damage. Combined with powerful teeth at the back of its jaws, it could quickly and efficiently tear its victim to pieces. A solitary predator, Barbara Felis had to be fast. Cunning pack animals like wolves and coyotes drove hunters off their kills, much like modern hyenas scare off cheetahs. Larry Martin suspects Barbara Felis was all brawn and no brains. How smart was Barbara Felis? Well, let's try to find out. One way of doing this is simply to make a cast of the inside of its skull. Turns out that Barbara Felis doesn't have a very big brain. In fact, if we look at this animal right here, you see these are almost the same size. But if we look at the skull, that this one came from, it's a lot smaller than Barbara Felis. This is an ordinary bobcat. Barbara Felis, with its much smaller brain in comparison to its body size, can reasonably be expected to be a lot dumber than this bobcat right here. In fact, Barbara Felis has one of the smallest brains for its body size of any animal that we know about. Unlike a cheetah, 
Barbara Felis's legs were too short and robust to chase its prey. Built for power, not speed, it patiently hid in the trees and waited. It would be surprising that an animal with a brain this size had complex social behavior. And it seems likely that it ambushed its prey. It picked its place of ambush by instinct. And it ambushed animals like rhinoceroses and elephants that were so big, they probably didn't think they had any predators at all. Based on the fossils from the La Brea tar pits, Chris Shaw suspects Smilodon was also an ambusher. The anatomy of Smilodon indicates that it was an ambush killer, basically because uh, the animal was built very stockily, for one. It was very powerfully built in the front. They probably attained perhaps 30 to 35 miles per hour in a very short distance. But the tail is short, and the long tails in cats are built for turning corners quickly. And these were just not capable of doing that. Modern cats have long tails and are much more agile than their distant cousins. When attacking, they aim for the neck and use their canines to crush the spinal cord. But today, there's a lively debate among paleontologists about how the cats made their kills. Chris thinks their teeth present a unique problem. The shape, size, and length of these sabers uh, could render it to be a very delicate type of instrument, especially going in a very hard, bony part of the neck area. If the saber got caught in between two of the vertebrae and the animal being attacked was struggling to get away, the saber could be easily snapped off. And a saber tooth without a saber is uh, not a very effective predator anymore. It's my thought that these animals attacked rather than the neck area where there were lots of bones, but the soft underbelly of large animals tearing out a huge chunk of flesh and allowing the animal then to bleed to death and then coming back and feeding at leisure. Based on his studies of Barbarophilus, Larry Martin has come to a very different conclusion about the killing techniques of the saber tooths. You could kill an animal by biting its stomach. The problem is that you have to get the stomach in your mouth to bite it. The lower jaw gets in the way. The stomach of a rhinoceros or an elephant would be too flat to get in its mouth. And that's why I think it's more likely that these animals attack the throat. Now, I have here a cross section of a Chileoceros, an extinct rhinoceros that lived with Barbara Felis. I think this is the animal Barbara Felis probably had for lunch. And what it would do is it bend the throat around until it was exposed, and then it would stab into the side of the throat like this. And you'll notice it doesn't encounter any bone. And this curvature that's hard to explain otherwise causes it to cut a corner out of the throat like that. And in so doing, it cuts these blood vessels. And these are the blood vessels that supply the brain. And it means the animal dies in about 30 seconds. It's a wonderful killing mechanism. Unlike Barbara Ophelis, who was a solitary hunter, Chris Shaw has found evidence that Smilodon may have lived in groups, like African lions do today. Female lions hunt and share their kills with the other members of the group. They also take turns rearing and nurturing their cubs. But Smilodon may have gone lions one better. They may have nursed and cared for each other. This is an example of a smile on lower back that has been horribly injured, as opposed to a healthy one. This animal was so horribly crippled that it could not have fed itself or, or provided for itself. And this is an excellent example of why I believe that these animals did have a social structure. This did not die because of this injury. This animal survived through protection by the group, from other predators and also through nurturing or the ability to go and feed at the group's kills. Smilodon was the last of the great saber-tooths. 
From a mindless killing machine to a cunning and sophisticated predator, the cats had taken a giant leap into the future. But their 40 million year reign was about to come to an end. Poised to take center stage was the most ruthless predator nature ever devised. 11,000 years ago, as the last ice age ended, the Earth underwent a dramatic change. An ice sheet a mile thick that covered much of the northern hemisphere began to melt and the climate began to change. As temperatures grew milder, patterns of vegetation shifted and the food source of the giant plant eaters began to disappear. The saber tooth had undergone millions of years of adaptation and evolution to become sophisticated killers. Now, in the twilight years of the plant eaters, the cats once again faced extinction. For Larry Martin, over-specialization is a house of cards. Here we have seven million years of evolution. They started out small, they always do, but then they became progressively larger. As they became larger, they had to catch larger and larger prey species. In the end, they wound up with rhinoceroses and elephants. This was okay. In fact, it's a very lucrative niche. But if your prey species happens to become extinct, and these rhinoceroses and elephants did, then you're forced to catch faster and more agile prey, and these animals couldn't so they became extinct too. In a sense, the thing that made them successful in the end caused their failure. To be the biggest and the best is a high-risk strategy. The more specialized an animal is, the more unable it is to adapt to rapidly changing conditions. Then nature threw the killer cats another curve. A new predator, armed not with sabers, but with rocks and spears. Humans took deadly aim on the last of the plant eaters. Over 50% of all the land animals in North America vanished. Their disappearance spelled the doom of the saber-toothed cats. Maybe it was a combination of both climatic change and humans coming into the new world to cause the ultimate extinction of this magnificent carnivore. Did the great cats go quietly? Maybe not. It seems odd that Stone Age man and saber tooth coexisted, yet there is no prehistoric art to record the event. But then, who would paint a picture of the creature that haunts his dreams? And what is more frightening, we may not have seen the last of the killer cats. Saber-toothed cats have evolved time and time again. Being a saber-toothed cat must have been a wonderful occupation, but it was also high risk. They kept becoming extinct. But after they became extinct, they'd evolve right back again. In a sense, extinction was not forever. Today, the clouded leopard of Southeast Asia is a jaguar-sized killer with the longest canines alive. Perhaps, somewhere in the world, the next saber-toothed cat is lurking in the shadows, waiting for his next meal.